If you're anything like me, the fact that it's October means that you are now completely into watching things that are spooky, scary, and creepy. But not everybody is completely into those things, and they shouldn't miss out on Halloween just because they don't like to get scared out of their pants. And so what we're going to be doing today is looking at what I'm calling the scary scale. It goes from 1 to 13, 1 being not scary at all, 13 being the scariest thing you've ever seen or imagined. We're going to find movies that fall on all spots on the list so that no matter who you are and how much you like to be scared, you can get into the Halloween spirit. And as we're getting into it, don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's go ahead and start out at our mildest scary movie, and that's going to be Hotel Transylvania. Now you could look at this lower end of the scare scale and say, hey, you could just put a bunch of Disney movies here, and you're absolutely right. Hocus Pocus, Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, The Haunted Mansion, uh, you could go to some of those Disney Channel original movies with Halloween Town, and those are all good answers, but let's stay away from uh, Disney because, you know, they're pretty easy to find and a lot of people know them. Let's talk about something uh, that's not Disney today. So let's take a look at that Hotel Transylvania starring Adam Sandler, Kevin James, David Spade, you know, his whole big crew. Now, this is a good one if you're not into spooky stuff because, for one, it's a movie made for children, uh, so it's not really scary at all. But it does really have that Halloween feel uh, with all of the monsters being around. It's a good way to introduce uh, your kids or people who are uh, really not that comfortable with scary movies to you know the different ideas and tropes that go along with it plus you know this first hotel transylvania i think is like inarguably really good like it's just a good movie uh, you can have different opinions as they go along but i think this first hotel transylvania is really uh just got a lot of heart and you know just because we're being spooky doesn't mean that we can't you know be in touch with our feelings a little bit Moving one step up on the scary scale is going to be Ernest Scared Stupid. I put this a little bit higher because when I was a kid, I actually was terrified of this movie. Um, I've mentioned before that I didn't really like little things, like smaller things, Chucky being the prime example of it. And there are trolls in this movie that are smaller and fit into you know places that are, are easy to hide. And so they can jump out at you. And I never really liked that as a kid. Plus, this movie actually puts kids in genuine danger, which always kind of elevates things if you are a kid yourself and you're seeing kids, you know, getting picked off by this troll. But because it is an earnest movie, it is just completely full of, like, slapstick, uh, funny moments, lots of interesting characters. Eartha Kitt is in this movie as a witch, which is just great casting. She's just a lot of fun as well. And Ernest is just, you know, a great character. It's, it's so funny to see... You know, both with Ernest and with, you know, like Ted Lasso, these characters that started off as commercial characters, but really grow to be, you know, these heartwarming uh, characters that people fall in love with. It's kind of like a funny connection between those those two. But Ernest Scared Stupid is a Halloween, like, favorite for me. And so it's going to fall number two. If you're an adult and getting scared of Ernest Scared Stupid, then I apologize. But maybe stay with the animated ones from here on out. Getting just a little bit scarier, we're going to go to Goosebumps, starring Jack Black. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised with this movie. Uh, if you are a fan of even just looking at the covers of the Goosebumps books, like which is pretty much where I fell, again, was a big scaredy cat as a kid. Um, there's a lot of cool imagery that is found on those, but so then works its way into uh, this movie. A lot of different monsters, again, in the way that Hotel Transylvania does, where you get to see... You know, the Wolfman and vampires and invisible men and uh, living dummies and all of these things. I think they managed to find a way to actually make a story that, you know, fit with just being goosebumps and not just being an adaptation of one of the books, too. And so, yeah, this one definitely gets a recommendation from me. In fact, all of these movies uh, that I'm going to talk about today do. But this is, like, really one I think that's a good one to cut your teeth on. Like, if you're actually trying to be like, I want to watch something that that might scare me. And of course, remember, fear is completely subjective and what scares one person doesn't scare another. And so just trying to give some options for people out there who are hesitant to even watch anything if it's described as scary at all. And so Goosebumps is gonna be there at number three for me. And I do think that you know most people, if not everybody, can enjoy this one. We're gonna go back to 1987 for the next movie on our list. The number four spot on the scary scale is going to be Monster Squad. Um, Imagine the Goonies, but they're fighting Dracula, the mummy, the creature from the Black Lagoon, and the Wolfman. And that's pretty much what this movie is. Anything that you might have 
problems wise with the Goonies, like with maybe things that haven't aged well, you're gonna have that in Monster Squad. Um, it's the same kind of humor. It's not as good of a movie as the Goonies. Like I don't think it's probably as well written, but it's just a lot of fun. It's got great creature designs. Um, and again, putting the kids in danger makes it so, you know, it's it's a little more scary. And the fact that the, the adults get roped into it actually in this one really does kind of, you know, make it that next level. Now, Hubie Halloween, I'd have to rewatch it again to make sure it was as scary as I'm remembering in my head. Not actually scary. Like, again, if you like horror movies, it's not a scary movie. It's an Adam Sandler comedy. But there are those times where it does build up scares and I think it does that more so than Monster Squad which is why I put it uh, a little bit higher than that. Monster Squad is just more of like that monster fun whereas this one's kind of like oh you know like maybe people, people are dying and I don't know why and the environment that it's happening in seems pretty realistic though of course some of the characters not so much. This movie was surprisingly you know decent and I enjoyed it and that's all I'm going to say about that one. Hubie Halloween. If you haven't seen it give it a try. It's on Netflix. Ghostbusters is going to be at number six on the scare scale, and it's really going to be that bridge between not scary and scary. Now, there are some genuine moments in this movie where they can catch you off guard and you can get, you know, genuinely scared by them. And also, like, some of the creature designs in it are good enough to, you know, traumatize you as a child. Now, that's coming from me again, who was scared of the trolls in earnest, scared stupid. But Ghostbusters is just, again, a fantastic movie. Super funny. Enough... I guess action you would call it it's not like they're like running and jumping over things or anything but exciting stuff that is happening just a great movie to watch when you want to scratch that spooky itch now we're getting up to those movies that if you are squeamish maybe you should think twice about watching them um, but I would again recommend all these but let's ease into the violence with something really stylized in Sleepy Hollow by Tim Burton if the fact that it's made by Tim Burton doesn't kind of make you a little less freaked out about it, then I, I don't know what really is going to. It's a period piece. The blood is all the color of tomato soup. Uh, it's about the Headless Horseman, so people are gonna get decapitated. Um, but it is just super atmospheric. And the score by Danny Elfman is one of my favorite things to put on to listen to this time of year. Even after Halloween, when it's just like the, the, the leaves falling off of trees and everything still, it's just, really moody and just great driving music also pretty much all of Danny Elfman's scores are great driving music plus if you're trying to get somebody to watch a scary movie with you maybe they like Johnny Depp hey he's here in this one too given a really I would say weird performance but not for a late period Johnny Depp it certainly seemed like a, an odd performance for him him at the time uh, when it came out back in 1999 super great cast uh, super fun uh, visual effects and, you know, Darth Maul plays the Headless Horseman, at least for part of the movie. And so that's a little fun trivia fact for you. Number eight on the scare scale is Fright Night, the remake. And, um, yeah, this movie is great. Uh, it, again, you can talk people into watching this one because it's got that Colin Farrell in it. Uh, and he's, like, super suave and cool in this movie as Jerry the Vampire. Also, if you are really into Doctor Who, David Tennant's in this movie, too. Uh, again, a great cast, Anton Yelchin, taken too early uh, in that horrible accident. And in watching this movie, you really see like how much of a leading man he like is and, and could have continued to be. I don't really want to spoil anything from this movie because it is legitimately one of me and my wife's favorite movies to show people. Like We will ask people when we're first starting to get to know them, have you ever seen Fright Night from 2011? And if they've said no, it's like, well, I guess I know what we're doing tonight. I recommend the original also, it's super good. Uh, but for me, I'm going to be putting uh, Fright Night on the list here. Number nine, though not the scariest movie on the list, to me might be the best Halloween movie ever made. And that is Trick or Treat. Not Trick or Treat that starred uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Gene Simmons, but Trick or Treat that has a little boy with a burlap sack on his head. This movie's an anthology, which means that it uh, doesn't just have one story, but goes and follows a couple different stories throughout the movie that kind of intertwine with each other. Uh, you get different kinds of stories, like uh, a story about a little red riding hooded person, and uh, a story following like a vampire, and a story uh, that is going with uh, some kids and that are, are maybe now ghosts. And all of them just have their own feel, but all still like, completely like make you feel like what Halloween night does. 
This is the first one on the list that like if I'm watching it by myself, there could be moments where I hear a creaking behind me and I <laughs> turn around again, even though I'm a lot better than I used to be. I'm still a pretty easy scare. It doesn't mean that I don't like to get scared anymore though. Uh, but there are a couple moments in this movie or set pieces even where uh, things will be happening and if I think I hear something behind me, I might pause the movie and go check it out. But for real, if you're willing to give any movie a shot uh, this year when it comes to the Halloween season, Trick or Treat is the one to do it with. Number 10 on the list is going to be 1987's Poltergeist. And this is one of like the classic horror movies. And you might say like, oh, it's old. It's not going to be that scary. There are plenty of things that happen in this movie that are still like iconic scares. The clown is going to be, you know, the big one that sticks out in my head at first. Plus, it's got the iconic image of the little girl in front of the TV. And the idea that it's in your home, like an idea that would go on to you know, be fleshed out in different ways, like with the Paranormal Activity movies. Like this one really kind of was that first big one that was popular that was like, hey, you know what? You don't have to go somewhere scary to have scary things happen to you. It might just happen, you know, in your living room or in your bedroom. And when you don't have those safe places to run to when you're scared, it makes being scared like a hundred times worse. Plus, Craig T. Nelson is in this movie and any movie with Mr. Incredible is automatically awesome in my book. It'd be hard to make a Halloween movie list without putting Halloween itself on there from 1978. John Carpenter uh, created a masterpiece with this one that would go on to inspire generations of filmmakers uh, in creating the slashers that became super popular in the decades to come. Not the first slasher ever, but really the one that reinvigorated it and got it into the mind where people were like, hey, let's just take a holiday and have a killer go out and you no know, murder people. But the difference between this movie and a lot of those copycats is that this one doesn't really rely on like the blood and there's not a ton of blood in this one. So if you're really squeamish about violence, which I can understand, uh, this is a good one to watch. If like that's the only thing holding you back from watching horror movies, Halloween is a good one to see because there is not a lot of that here. It's very much um, just kind of alluded to and you are, uh, think you see more than you actually do. A lot like, you know, Psycho uh, did when, with the shower scene. Again, the music does a terrific job of just building that tension that Carpenter uh, did himself as well. And Michael Myers has just a super iconic look uh, with that messed up William Shatner mask uh, that he wears and uh, the fact that he doesn't really say anything and is just a presence in the darkness, um, relentlessly just going after people, just. And I think it helps that he has Dr. Loomis after him too, uh, his like psychiatrist who just knows that he is an evil person, which maybe not the best psychiatrist if they just think you're an evil person, but maybe he's not so wrong about Michael Myers. This one goes a little bit higher on the scare scale because if I even am, am just thinking about or talking about this movie with people, it could maybe get me a little bit nervous. But Halloween, again, classic. Now with Halloween and my pick for 12 and my pick for 13, um, I can definitely say like there's an argument for any of them being over the other ones, but for me it's just kind of like the less fun. But for me this is just kind of how they fall, and for me on number 11 is going to be the remake of It, just the first one, um, with the kids. Man, that movie is so good. It came out in summer, and um, I mean it was riding kind of on the... Uh, the coattails of, of Stranger Things, but that's okay because Stranger Things was riding on the coattails of you know, the original uh, adaptation of it. And the acting from the kids is great. Pennywise is a very good uh, monster to have to deal with. And the fact that he has a bunch of different, different forms. And this movie just kind of is like right from the beginning, just going like full throttle. Uh, there's not much of a buildup of where you're like, I wonder if it's actually going to be scary, which is, is good if a horror movie can get you pretty quick like that. And, and most of the good ones do. One thing that this movie is, is pretty sad. And that's something this movie and the top pick are both going to have in common, like just sad movies. In fact, the next one is, is even sadder. And that's uh, number 13 is going to be Hereditary. And Hereditary is, man, I don't know if I've ever walked out of a movie as gut punched as I felt when I watched Hereditary. And there's just a couple shots and moments in this movie where it's just like, man, that I just don't feel good about after after seeing that. And there's a moment in this movie where somebody is expressing grief. That's how I'll describe it. And it is the most genuine 
sounding, acted moment of that that I think I've ever seen in a movie. Um, this movie is not fun. I say <laughs> movies are fun a lot. It's kind of my go-to, like, describing movies that I like. And this movie is not fun, but I do like it. I think it's very good. And if you are wanting to see a movie that is going to kind of just make you feel messed up and bad, man, Hereditary is the one for you. And that's the kind of movie you should have at the top of your scare scale. And that's what we got there. Um, if you have seen all these movies before, I mean, let me know what you think. If you haven't seen any of them, are you interested in any of these movies? Did I put these in the wrong order? Sound off below in the comments and let me know. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Meet me back here next Saturday where we're going to be taking a look at another spooky movie as we're continuing in October. Take care. See you later. Don't get too scared out there. <laughs>